I'd like to talk briefly about um, IT governance, what it is, why it's important, uh, who should be concerned with it, uh, and various things related to control objectives for information and related technologies. Uh, and and in that in that frame in that in that uh, process in that uh, environment, I'll be looking at framework processes control, a little bit about uh, management guidelines and uh, and maturity. So let's start off with 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 what it is. Okay, what is it? Well, um, confusing to some people, they think it it really lies within the IT staff, sort of. But in my opinion, it's the responsibility of the board of directors. Uh, perhaps you may want to allocate it to the CIO, or in some cases the CFO. There's a lot, <clears throat> a lot of relationship between finance and and IT. And so when you look at it, you want to look at it as an enterprise, right? Look at the entire business instead of drilling down into particular business units. And so, besides being a leader you're uh, thinking about organizational structures and, and uh, various processes that ensure that your organization IT sustains and extends the strategy of the business. Okay, that's what you're there for. You, you don't want to uh, be standalone about IT. And so you're sustaining the business and growing the business, uh, wh whatever the business goals are. And of course, this includes stakeholders now. It's not strictly internal. You want to look at uh, investors if you're publicly traded, et cetera. And so along, along that line then uh, in, of IT governance is uh, communication. Communication. A large percentage of business problems relate to that. So first of all, let me, let me separate in your mind IT management from IT governance. All right, management, in my opinion, is more internal, and and uh, looking at the present. Right, it's, it's focused on the uh, supply of IT services and, and products, uh, and and one might also consider the operations of of IT. One of my first consulting jobs with the Department of Defense, with Gulf Defense, was related to operations. IT governance, however, is uh, performing and transforming the IT infrastructure to meet the current needs of the business or future needs of a business. It's, it's uh, in many ways futuristic related. All right. So when you're looking at governing the IT, you're setting objectives. Uh, are your IT objectives aligned with the business? Uh, does, does it man, uh, maximize the benefits uh, that your business is presenting? And, and how how are, how responsible are you using your IT resources? Uh, everything should all, all the IT related links should be managed appropriately, and so done properly then, and compared to trended uh, assessments of your IT infrastructure, uh, you then look at your 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 direction and your performance measures, and rethink things. And then you venture off into uh, updating various IT activities, like like some of your automation activities or decreasing decreasing cost. IT is always very very costly, uh, and as I mentioned before, you want to manage the risk. Okay, so uh, why is all this important? Well, there's a shift in the meaning of asset uh, in the mindset of many people, and and I work a lot in in financial environments. So let me just uh, let me just point out the distinction there. You know, when one thinks of a financial asset, you're you're looking at hard assets and and uh, sometimes in, in, uh, other uh, intangibles. But one intangible that sometimes is overlooked is the information, knowledge, and expertise, and reputation, and trust, and the customer. You know, all those are intangibles that are an important part of of, of sustaining competitive advantage. And so you don't want to look at IT as just an enabler, just as, as a service enabler. You really want to look at it as something that has integrity and is reliable. All right. So it requires a huge investment generally. So you don't want to take this lightly. You don't want to take it lightly. It's too important. 
All right, so when I look at these pressures that uh, an IT consultant is under, I, I, I spend most of my time in IT consulting, but I am a business consultant, but I specialize in IT consulting. Um, you're, you're looking at the business pressures a lot and the business needs as, as you're, as you're uh, advising corporate governance. And there's some direct plans and policies that could be affected. I've, I've written a lot of policies for a lot of corporations, written a lot of business plans for corporations. And, um, of course, um, uh, performance, uh, and, and, uh, and, and, uh, how should I say, um, conformance, <laughs> performance and conformance, because it is slightly regulated, right? So you're constantly looking at these uh, pressures from uh, regulators and business partners as well as the, as the stakeholder side of it. Okay, so who should be concerned with IT governance? As I started out, a lot of times uh, folks look at it from a business unit scorecard Okay, in my opinion, that's that's narrow or an IT scorecard. You know, that's that's narrow, uh, but uh, it's uh, it's it's important. So you, you want to instead look at the intersection of business unit scorecards, IT scorecards, and corporate scorecards. Okay, just look at them all three. That that three legged stool helps you set direction and the expectations of uh, of what your uh, IT is doing. You know, and, and uh, one of the services I provide for companies is I do IT audits. And it, so, you know, if you were to hire Hamilton Solutions for audits, that's that's kind of what I do. I'm looking at working with uh, senior management and top executives, typically. And we talk about cascading strategies and policies and goals and organizational structures and accountabilities and performance measures. Uh, core business competencies, you know, just just a few of the of the keywords that come up in conversations uh, when I'm talking with them. All right, so I hope this is clearing up what governance is. It's 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 delivery, it's performance measure, and it's value uh, dr driven. Okay, you want to keep the stakeholders in the game, and of course you want to you want to have some sense of risk. I, I, I sort of jumped over that real quick, but you do want to look at uh, a risk assessment matrix. All right. And so when you look at the internal domains, your IT scope and your systemic contempt, uh, systemic competencies uh, should uh, merge with your business goals. There should be IT architecture and processes and skills that align functionally with your operational goals and your strategic goals and i call operational the the year-to-year -year goals that were a very tactical side of things and strategic goals uh in the, in the long run okay so there's quite a lot of of uh domain matching that uh that you need to get involved in and, and that i could do a, another very long video about it but let me, let me just summarize it into six steps you want to set the goals and put a team together and 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 the creation of this team is really key here uh, i typically advise clients to cut across functional teams when you're doing functional units when you do this uh, don't just pull people from it you, you want to grab people from marketing and finance etc and you want to understand by doing such especially you know you may want to make your team very matrix oriented where it's fluid um you understand the business and IT linkage. Okay, that's the reason why you want to do that. And one of the first charges that you may want to put on such a team is to uh, analyze and prioritize the gaps, right? You're looking at the gaps in performance, uh, gaps in goals, etc., And then uh, bring in some specific actions, you know, design specific actions. We're talking about project management now. And, and you know, that's, that's a whole deep level also in itself but you need to come up with an action list and before you get too deep into that take a moment to define success right come up with some success criteria so that you can evaluate what you're doing against success criteria 
uh, I've, I've managed and consulted with many companies sometimes where at the end of a project, we sit there arguing about whether or not we were successful. And in every of those where we didn't seem to agree, it's because there were no criteria of success ever discussed. All right. So you want to do that. And of course, you want to sustain. Okay, the alignment. You know, once you have done all this to create alignment, some, some folks call this a bottom-up model where you're looking from the ground and coming up from data structures and information structures and knowledge structures, you know, up to expert systems if you have the budget for that. Uh, but whatever that alignment is, you want to sustain that, right? It would not be it would not be very effective if you did all this work and then you couldn't maintain it. All right, so I hope this is helpful. Uh, very, very long and, and uh, detailed uh, conversation about IT governance. Thank you for listening. I am Dr. Hamilton, Principal Consultant and Owner of Hamilton's Solutions.